a warm welcome to this uh, Sunday worship, this fourth Sunday of Lent, which is special. It is Modern Sunday, or for some, it is Mother's Day. Welcome, particularly welcome to modern figures in our lives. And I hope that through the service, they are going to feel loved appreciated, blessed, and even infused and equipped to keep loving this world in need of love. Actually, Modern Sunday was a Christian holiday in this country. Uh, people used to return to their modern church on uh, Modern Sun Sunday. It was sometimes the largest church in their area. They were said to go Modern. We also had uh, hundreds of years ago the traditions of servants in stately home and mansion being allowed one day a year to return to visit their families and they would sometimes or always return home with a present for their mothers. That is modern on the mother's day has actually an American origin, but from about the 1950s, Modern Sundays and Mother's Day were somehow combined. And the good thing is that there are children who often uh, offer to do uh, more chores this, uh, this day, or some actually serve their moms breakfast in bed. If you haven't done that, it's not too late to do that. But we are also aware that for some, Modern Sunday has some mixed emotions. Uh, there are people who haven't got a good experience of being murdered. And there are people who struggle to be uh, biological mothers. So we also put them into God's hand that the, the Spirit would um, surround them and would bless them that they may feel loved as well. In this service, uh, we also remember uh, God's families, every church, and we ask that God's modern love also will be with us. So today, may we all experience a fresh, a new God model like loving embrace wherever we are. And our grace is going to lead us with the call to worship. Hello, it's Sarah and Grace. Happy Mothering Sunday to everybody. Uh, Grace is going to read the call to worship, but before that, I'm going to ask her about what she thinks Mothering Sunday is. So, Grace, what what do you think about Mothering Sunday? What do you think? What do you think it's about? About giving your mother's presents. Is that it. Anything else? No. No. What about looking after them and? Bringing them lots of cups of tea. No, they just do that to their children. Oh, well, I have to bring you a cup of tea. <laughs> what about, you know, thinking about our mothers and what they do for us? Yeah, and how they help us and protect us. Yeah? That's it? Yeah. Okay. The Grace is going to read the call to worship. Carol is now before you, O oh God, as a hen gathers her brood to protect them. Like a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. As we meet today and follow your example, protect us, support us, feed us with your unconditional love. Amen. Amen.
thank you God for giving us the other people who share our lives for present parents and their love for us. We praise you, O oh Lord, and bring you thanks, bring you thanks today. today. For mothers who comfort and look after us, we praise you, O oh Lord, and bring you thanks, thanks today. For fathers who support us, we praise you, O oh Lord, and bring, and bring you, you thanks today. today. For brothers and sisters who read something, we share our home. We praise you, O oh Lord, and bring you, and bring you thanks, thanks today. today. children and their parents we praise you O oh lord and um, bring you thanks today. today for relatives and friends who are with us in our happy and our sad times we praise you O oh lord um, and bring, bring you thanks today, today. for those who okay. birds who tell us about Jesus and bring us into the family of God. We praise you, O oh Lord, and, and bring, bring you thanks today. today. Help us as, as we, we live, live to, to know, know that, that we, we belong, belong to one, to one another, another and to, to your, your our father, father now, now and always. And always. Amen. Amen. Thank you God for all who care for us each day Thank you God for all who care for us each day We will thank God when we pray We will clap and shout a ray Thank you God for all who care for us each day Hello, this is the Mother in Sunday prayer for all caregivers including compassion A child is a precious gift given into the hands of birth parents, adopted parents, caregivers, relatives and church community. Together we undertake the raising of children and together we ask for help, Lord. Give us endurance as we care for babies, putting their needs ahead of our own, caring through the bone weariness of sleepless nights. Give us patience as we care for toddlers, guiding and correcting with warm voices and arts. As our young ones learn language, help us to delight in the joy of discovery seeing the world through their new eyes help us to become like children as our children grow and mature give us wisdom to know when to hold on and when to let go when to discipline and when to comfort in care for children we admit that we have made mistakes we have put our needs ahead of theirs we have not always been kind we have not always been the kind of parent we would like to be that you have called us to be forgive us and help us to be people who apologise, modelling repentance for our children. Today we also pray for parents and children who are grieving because they have lost each other, whether through death or estrangement. Thank you that you are our great caregiver, loving us with a love deeper and stronger than any we have ever known. Amen. Together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19 a prayer for the Ephesians for this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his, his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, 
to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Thanks be to God for this reading. Hello, my name's Sheila from Marple, URC. Uh, and as we know, it's Mother's Day today, or Mothering Sunday. So I thought I'd have a look at some mothers in the Bible that we know of. Um, there are quite a lot of them, so I've only picked a few. But the first one we obviously think of is Eve, who had Cain and Abel, amongst other children. She had quite a few children, but we don't know the names of all of them. And then the next one I thought of was Moses' mother who made his, I mean, him a basket in, in the bulrushes and lined it so that the water didn't come in and put him in the basket for someone else to find and bring him up because she was afraid that Pharaoh would kill him. He was killing all the baby boys in that time and she wanted her child to be safe. So she hid him for another mother to find him or another lady to find him and bring him up as her son. Now that must have taken some courage to give your child away, but she wanted him to be safe. That was the most important thing. But I didn't know her name until I looked it up. And um, Moses' mother was called uh, Jochebed. Now, I hadn't heard that before, and I'm not sure if I've pronounced it correctly now, but that was Moses' mother. Um, and then we have the older mothers in the Bible, the ones, the ladies who couldn't have children, or at least they thought they couldn't have. And then they prayed to God, and in an older age or later life, they had their own children. There was Elizabeth, there was Sarah, and I think there were a couple of others as well. So they had to watch moms bringing their children up, and there must have been a great sadness because they thought they couldn't have their own children. But eventually they did, so that all ended up happily. And the one we really all think of, most of all, of course, is Jesus' mother, Mary. Now, she couldn't have had an easy time, as we know. But none of the mothers in the Bible seem to have had a very easy time. And mothers today don't have an easy time either, do they? Um, you have the young mother who gives birth, probably a schoolgirl even, and can't look after the baby. So she has to give the child away, and that's brought up by someone else being their mother, she gives him away or her away for adoption. Now that's a huge sacrifice, but done for the right reasons. And then you have um, refugee mothers who live in camps and haven't got enough food or water to feed or look after their children and are struggling on a daily basis. Mothers who take their child to a refuge because they're probably in an abusive relationship so their life's not easy either and you come to single moms who are struggling to work and to have enough money to clothe and feed their children this is where our food banks are coming in isn't it and of course the moms we think of today especially are those who are going out to work or probably nursing or in one of the caring professions having to bring their children up having to come home from work tired if they're going out or even if they're working at home they're tired uh, and then they've got to homeschool the children so all these mums the, the biblical mums the mums of today it's quite hard work really isn't it um but it's very worthwhile and all of those mums love their children dearly and i'm sure their children love them too so mums all over the world are much loved and their first love seems to be for their children really to make sure their children are safe and they're happy and years ago in junior church with the very little children they did some drawings of their mums and I thought you might like to see just four of them because I saved them so the first mum is a very smiley happy looking mum so here she is and uh, she's obviously a hard worker because she's got very red hands, so she put, probably does a lot of pot washing there, but she's got a nice smiley face. And the second mum, I think, probably does homeschooling because she looks as though she's quite um, firm about things, but she's smiling, she's got her glasses on, um, and she looks a happy mum. The third one, I'm quite certain, is quite a witty sort of mum because she's obviously in a dancing mood 
She's got a lot of movement there in her body. And the last mum I want to show you, I'm a little bit worried about really. I think she might have put the child on a naughty step. Um, but I'm sure she's better than she looks. But I'll show you the mum anyway. So here she is. And she's, uh, she does look a bit cross. But that could be a nice big smile, nice big grin. So whatever your mum is looking like at the moment, whether she's cross with you or smiley with you, go and give your mum a big hug and say, Mum, I love you. Or do a big picture of, of mum for her on Mother's Day. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money buying something. Just make something for your mum. Or go out and see if there are a few daisies in the garden. They are coming up already. And pick those as well to give her a bunch of flowers there. So mums are special. And we should look after them and treasure them always. Whatever age we are, look after your mum. Bye. This Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2, 9 to 11, and 27 to 31. Words of Hope Comfort my people, says our God, comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them in full for all their sins. Jerusalem, go up on a high mountain and proclaim the good news. Call out with a loud voice, Zion, announce the good news. Speak out and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah that their God is coming. The Sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. And verse 27. Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. 
Even those who are young grow weak. Young people can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Thanks be to God for this his word and may he help in our understanding of it. Amen. So today I want to talk about our gentle and tender shepherd. A few chapters beforehand we have the king Hezekiah who is actually one of the most successful kings that Israel has had. He has worked hard to stamp out idolatry and to purify worship to the living God. So in Isaiah chapter 38, he is uh, about to die and uh, actually the prophet Isaiah confirms that indeed he will die. So what does he do? He turned his face to the wall and prayed in these terms. Remember Lord, I, I walk before you in faithfulness and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your sight. He then wept bitterly. This stirred the tenderness and the gentleness of the Lord who sent Isaiah to tell him, I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and he also promised that he would deliver God's people from Assyria. Oh my goodness, 15 years, just like that, added to his life. Haven't we felt like King Hezekiah in this season, threatened with death and sickness, fearful perhaps? And I'm sure, as I know us, most of us have handled this with great faith and trust and hope. But it's only fair to actually acknowledge that many of us have questions, many of us have even doubted. And I think this has really exposed that there are people who mainly put their trust on the cure, on the vaccines, on the science. Some put their trust mostly on the government. Those are fine, but they don't quite replace God. And God is even working not only through them, but also beyond them. I like statistics and there is a, a, a survey that was done by the Pew Research Center across the, the, the whole world to assess, unpack the impact of the pandemic on people. And they have found that 10% that of people in the UK had their faith grown stronger as a result of this pandemic. On the other hand, 4% have seen their faith weaken as a result of this pandemic. Isaiah, however, has some encouraging words for us in this season that we can call COVID-19 captivity. Overall, God is described by the prophet as gentle and tender, as a shepherd. And that, shepherd, that shepherding brings both comfort like a modern comfort, but it also brings authority. Let's start with comfort. Comforter. Isaiah 66 verse 13 says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. We've all been kids and we can confess that there were times when we were a little bit silly, if we want to uh, confess, a little bit naughty at times. Um, and even when we are wrong, we, all, we always used to run to sometimes our mothers with exceptions and we knew that they would always welcome us, most of the time though, with open arms. So mothers are somehow, most of the time, always hopeful and positive about the future. We are always their children, however old we are. And whatever we do, there is an African proverb and there could be equivalent in this country that says, you do not throw away a child. You don't give up a child. And we have that picture of Jesus in the gospel, picturing himself as that comforting presence, 
like a kind of mother hen. He says in um, Matthew 23, 37, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophet and stoned those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather you, to gather your children together like a hen gathers her chick under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus comforting, shepherding, as we know, has been costly. He was active. He was self-giving. He took on our sin and shame upon himself as he comforted us or offered comfort. And actually here, comfort means that more than the old traditional English word to strengthen. It is matched with the womanly gentleness. It is something that speaks to our heart. It is in, in the background of reassurance as well. But the shepherd comfort with more than love and peace. But the shepherd also comfort with authority. Do you know what? It's not easy to be comforted by someone who has no authority. It may sound just like a wishy-washy, positive thinking, God empty religion or a self self-help series of empty promises. Jesus comfort with authority. Imagine your boss asking you not to worry about your job, a teacher asking you not to worry about your mark, a doctor asking you not to worry about your health, a good doctor, a council asking you not to worry about your council tax bill, or your bank asking you not to worry about your debt. Jesus asking us not to worry about our sins when we truly repent. When hope is given by authoritative sources, we can believe it, we can rest in peace, can't we? But maybe this is also a season to really be honest about what is taking our hope away. Maybe fear, maybe anxiety, and I'm just aware that this pandemic has been on for so long that some people can get accustomed to this bondage, to this pain. And I think as things are getting better, we really have to move out. So Isaiah refocuses our mind with this powerful word taken from the message, verse 28. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He is creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out, doesn't pause to catch his breath. He energizes those who get tired. He gives fresh strength to the dropout. Those who wait upon God get fresh strength. Wow. Wow. And I think that it's good to remember that those promises are for you and me that power of god display is for you and for me we have god in christ we have god dna within us we share in that and our lives and christ's life and story and ours they are intertwined they are one aren't they so when we grieve we ought to be aware that if we are found in god in christ we are grieving within Christ, and Christ is feeling every inch of our heart, every inch of our grief along the way. So we can have hope and confidence from that intimate authority. Mothers, I am aware, like praying for their children. I know a remarkable mother, and for me, she said the most important prayer. Don't get me wrong, she pray about jobs and she pray about good health, but many a times every day she prays that her children will come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. She can't imagine or fathom eternity without them and she prays for their salvation. She prays that they will come to know Jesus for themselves. I found that remarkable and she reminds me of a post prayer to the Ephesians. And here Paul prays like a mother, like a parent to the church of Ephesus. 
with the challenges that they were facing. He says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derive its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith and to know that love that surpasses all knowledge. And I know we've got many questions and I, and I know wisdom and answers are important. They are part of our faith, part of our journey. But this morning, why don't we ask God rather for the experience of his love? And I think until we experience the fullness, the depth, the breadth, the height, the width of God's love as expressed in Jesus on the cross, until we know that and experience that, all other wisdoms, we always lack something. So why don't we ask for God's motherly love to be revealed to us this modern Sunday to overwhelm us this modern Sunday? And we tap into that mothering heart of God, that tender and gentle shepherd full of comfort and authority. May we welcome that today. May we let God's love embrace us to God's glory. As, as we come now to a time of uh, prayer, a different statistics uh, show that 41% of people say that they have tighter family bonds as a result of this pandemic. So on this modern Sunday, why don't we strengthen or tighten our relationship with our Heavenly Father? Why don't we ask Him to increase the bond of His love in and around us? Why don't we ask him to strengthen God's love in our church family, in our network of Christian relationships? We thank God for our family, but we also focus now on our spiritual family. Why, why don't we ask that? That we want to experience power of God's love today once more that we want to be refreshed in his tender and gentle, loving, shepherding presence, that we will have a fresh wave and, and, and breeze of his comforting balm running through from the top of our head to the tip of our toes and entering all the cavities of our heart, of our soul, of our mind and refreshing us with love this Sunday. Because if we've never experienced God's love as embodied through Christ, why don't we say, Lord, come. I don't just ask for questions or try to make sense of things, but I want to know your love, to understand your love. Most importantly, to experience your love. For God is love. So love of God, love vaster than the oceans, flow around us wherever we may be. Spirit of Jesus, Holy Spirit, stand beside us. Fill our homes, fill our hearts, our living homes, our kitchens, our bedroom, wherever we are, fill us, surround us, and give us a big modern hug, Holy Spirit, this morning. Change us, transform us, challenge us, renew us, refresh us, fill us with your purposes and help us, enable us in word and action to share that love. This we ask in the love of God the Father, in the name of God the Son and through the power and the presence of God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hello, I'm Mary Brown from Eastwood URC. Shall we pray? Let us pray. Psalm 107 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Lord, we thank you for this day, this day of remembering, rejoicing and responding. Lord of love, hear our prayers. You know what it is to love your children, to watch over them tenderly, anxiously, proudly and constantly. You know what this means for you have called us your children and you care for each of us as deeply as a mother cares for her child. We pray for those entrusted with the responsibility of motherhood. Grant to each one your wisdom, guidance and strength. We pray especially for single mothers faced with raising a child or children on their own. No one else to share the demands and joy of parenthood. Give them patience, devotion and dedication. We remember also those who have lost their mothers, orphaned as children or, or given up for adoption or whose mothers have died. This day can bring pain rather than pleasure. So Lord, give them your comfort and support. Hear our prayer. We remember also those separated from their children, those who have moved far from home. Lord, you understand what mothers face, what they give and feel. Accept our thanks for them and grant them your special blessing. We think also today of all those who are bearing pain and illness. Grant them thy spirit of healing, thy spirit of peace and hope courage and endurance, so that their anxieties and fears may fade, and grant them perfect confidence and trust in you. We remember too the members and friends of Marpole and Eastwood URCs, especially those on the prayer list. We pray for and remember all those countries at war or where there is only fragile peace. Be with those trying to bring about peace and give them patience in their negotiations. And I finish with a Celtic prayer. May every task be done with joy and every word that we employ show the Lord in heaven above that all we do, we do for love. Amen.
as we come to the end of this act of worship, thank you ever so much for joining us and thank you to all those who took part. Next week is the fifth Sunday of Lent and it is a communion service. And now Jill Julian is going to bless us to finish. Hello, this is Jill Julian from Marpol URC. I'd like to read a short blessing. May you feel God's love around you. May you be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. May you know the love of family and the support of true friends. May you have joy and laughter in your life. May you enjoy the sun on your face. May you keep well and safe. Blessings to all of you on this holy day. Amen. Now the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this Mother's Day service. We hope you have a good week and we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless. <laughs>